Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the final clade of dinosaurs. We've already covered the sauropodomorphs and ornithischians, who are both herbivores, but now we're going to cover the mostly carnivorous clade. So let's jump right in. <laughs> Theropod means beast foot, and this name was coined by paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh in 1881. However, for a while researchers didn't consider all the theropods to be a monophyletic clade, so the name was mostly discarded until the 1950s. Alfred Romer then classed theropods and sauropodomorphs into a monophyletic clade he named Sorischia, which means lizard hip because the pubis points forward, as in squamates. But, Romer also subdivided theropods into Coelurosauria for the little ones and Carnosauria for the big ones. As more fossils came in, in the 1970s, Rinch and Barlsbold added more clades, including Deinonychosauria, Ovaraptorosauria, Ornithomimosauria, and Deinocyrosauria. And finally, with the advent of cladistics in the 1980s, Carnosauria was split into Ceratosauria and Titanurae, Coelurosauria came to include the Tyrannosauroids, so it wasn't just little theropods. Dinocyrosauria became Dinocyridae, which is a subset within Ornithomimosauria, and Deinonychosauria became Dromaeosauridae, which groups with Ovaraptorosauria in the clade Manoraptora. Now, taxonomy aside, what unites these dinosaurs? For one thing, they have postcranial skeletal pneumaticity, like some other dinosaurs and pterosaurs. That means they have air spaces within their bones, making them lighter. They are bipedal with three toes, possess an intramandibular joint between the dentary and postdentary bones, and have an extra opening between the nostrils and antorbital fenestra called the promaxillary fenestra. This fenestra may have helped with shock absorption when killing prey. And finally, theropods have a furcula, or wishbone. In the early 1900s, the Danish paleontologist Gerard Halman thought that birds couldn't be dinosaurs because there were no known dinosaurs with a furcula, like birds. Earlier researchers, such as Thomas Henry Huxley in the late 1800s, considered birds to be theropods based on the fossils of Archaeopteryx and Compsognathus, but this hypothesis fell out of favor in the early 1900s. However, the discovery of Sedgesaurus in 1936 proved that theropods did indeed have a furcula, and subsequent studies in other Coelophysoids, Allosauroids, Ovaraptorosaurs, Troodontids, Spinosaurids, Compsognathids, Therizinosauroids, Dromaeosaurids, and Tyrannosauroids have confirmed this fact. Now, paleontologists and ornithologists overwhelmingly consider birds to be theropod dinosaurs, and we'll cover this in the next video. For now though, we'll stick with the phylogeny of non-avian theropods. For starters, Eodromius and Daemonosaurus from the late Triassic are the most basal true theropods. We mentioned these guys in Dinosaur Ancestors. Tawa is another early form from the late Triassic of North and South America, and past this we come to the group that includes more derived theropods, Neotheropoda. The most basal clade within Neotheropoda is Coelophysoidea, which contains its namesake Coelophysis and Pedochiosaurus, as well as other late Triassic and early Jurassic theropods. Like the earlier theropods, all of these were relatively small, lithe predators, and the primary reason for this was evidently that the early dinosaurs were in the shadow of the much larger Pseudosuchians. As we know, that changed during the end Triassic extinction when those large Pseudosuchians were wiped out. Suddenly, theropods could get much larger, and they did. Dilophosaurus from early Jurassic North America reached 23 feet in length, and the basal titanurin Cryolophosaurus from early Jurassic Antarctica reach 21 feet. After the Dilophosaurids branched off, Theropoda becomes Avarostra, splitting between Ceratosauria and Titanurae. In the former clade, Ceratosauridae has members extending from the late Jurassic, such as the horned Ceratosaurus, to the early Cretaceous, such as Geniodectes. Sister to Ceratosauridae is Abelisauroidea, which again splits into Noasauridae and Abelisauridae. The Noasaurids are odd. For instance, Masiacosaurus has a downward curving jaw, and Limusaurus displays fingers 2, 3, and 4, like birds, but unlike most other non-avian dinosaurs. The last clade within Abelisauroidea is Abelisauridae, whose members are unique for their deep, short skulls. These carnivores hail from South America, such as Scorpia venator and the horned Carnotaurus. 
Madagascar, such as Majungasaurus, and India, such as Rajasaurus. Both Noasaurids and Abelisaurids appeared in the early Cretaceous and went extinct in the late Cretaceous. Now we come to Titanurae, which splits into Megalosauroidea and Avitheropoda. The most famous member of the former clade, Megalosaurus, was one of the first three dinosaurs ever discovered. Originally, it was represented as a sprawling, lizard-like animal, but as researchers continued to study dinosaurs, they realized theropods didn't walk like that. Instead, they were bipedal, as birds still are. And a number of other megalosauroids have since come out of England, including Eustreptospondylus, Magnosaurus, and Baryonyx. That brings us to one of the main clades of megalosauroids called Spinosauridae. This clade is well known for its members with elongate jaws for catching fish. The most famous of these, Spinosaurus, was featured as the primary antagonist in the movie Jurassic Park 3, where it squared off against a Tyrannosaurus, eventually killing it, and thereby the movie as well. However, in reality, these two would have never fought each other, not least because they lived millions of years apart, separated by some 25 million years. Another fact is that the long maw of Spinosaurus would have been unable to grasp something as large and powerful as Tyrannosaurus, and would have broken due to its lack of structural support. On a related note, debate has raged over the posture of Spinosaurus, where some perceived it as this tall, completely bipedal theropod, while others perceived it to be a quadruped, at least partially. In light of more recent studies, authors conclude that Spinosaurus could walk bipedally, but wasn't erect as previously thought. Now we come to Avitheropoda, which is divided between Allosauroidea and Coelurosauria. Within Allosauroidea, we find Metriacanthosauridae, comprised of middle to late Jurassic theropods from Europe and Asia, and Allosauria. Within Allosauria are Allosauridae and Carcharodontosauria. The most famous of the Allosaurids is Allosaurus from late Jurassic North America, although Saurophaganax is also known from the same time and place. Among the Carcharodontosaurs, they seem to have been the apex predators in North America and Asia in the early Cretaceous until they were pushed out by a mid-Cretaceous extinction and the later Tyrannosaurids. This brings us to Coelurosauria. The most basal members include Bicentenaria from the Cretaceous and Zoolong and Sauromimus, both from the late Jurassic. Sauromimus, meaning squirrel mimic, is named for the feather-like filaments on its tail. So far, we have only seen filaments occurring in various dinosaurs, including among Ornithischians in the previous video, which may or may not be related to actual feathers. However, fossil traces of more complex, plumulaceous feathers that are identical to downy tufts found among birds have been found in some members of nearly all major Coelurosaurian clades that are part of Tyranoraptora, including Tyrannosauroidea. This clade is split into Proceratosauridae, so-called because its namesake was thought to be a ceratosaur, and Tyrannosauridae. The earliest Tyrannosauroids date to the late Jurassic, such as Guanlong from China, but they got progressively larger as time went on. They're basically just jumbo-sized Coelurosaurs. The most famous member of this clade, Tyrannosaurus, was named in 1905 by paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne, just a few years after assistant curator of the American Museum of Natural History, Barnum Brown, found the first partial skeleton. More derived than the Tyrannosauroids is the clade Compsognathidae, which extended from the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous. Remember from an evolving understanding that the bird-like features of Compsognathus were clear enough to convince both Thomas Henry Huxley and Charles Darwin, among others, to accept that birds are dinosaurs. By the way, Compsognathus is known only from two specimens, one from France and the other from the same Solnofen deposit in Germany, where all the Archaeopteryxes are found. Another interesting note is how similar the Compsognathid Sinocalyopteryx is to the Tyrannosauroid Dilong, the obvious reason for this being that they had only recently shared a common ancestor. More derived still is Maneraptoriformes. This clade marks the next stage of feather evolution, pinaceous feathers, which are feathers with a central shaft. Pinaceous feathers first appeared as wing-like structures on the arms of these dinosaurs, but only as adults. These half-wings weren't enough to be useful for flight, but the appearance of wing-like structures in adults indicates that they may have evolved in association with reproductive behaviors such as courtship display. These short wings were also used to protect and incubate a large clutch of eggs, and the evolutionary advantage of this is quite obvious. So, half wings are still very useful, after all. The most basal clade of Maneraptoriformes is Ornithomimosauria, 
a clade of mostly slim-legged omnivores and herbivores, including Struthiomimus, Pelicanomimus, and the gigantic Danachyrus. Beyond this is Manoraptora, whose members have such diagnostic traits as long arms, three or fewer fingers, semilunate wrist bones, a breastbone, and a backward-pointing pubis. Gee, these theropods sound quite a lot like birds. However, despite these unifying characteristics, the Manoraptorans specialized into a number of niches. For example, Alvarez Soridae was a clade of small insectivores, some of whom had only one finger, such as Mononychus. More derived than them is Therizinosauria, whose members possessed huge claws, likely for shearing leafy branches. Inching ever closer to birds is Panoraptora, which is characterized by sideways-oriented shoulder joints, long arms with a specialized folding wrist, and broad pinaceous feathers on the tail as well as the arms. Panoraptora splits into the clades Paraves and Ovaraptorosauria. Some members of the latter clade look so much like birds, such as Caudipteryx, that researchers have considered them primitive flightless birds. However, more recent analyses place them as sister to the Paraves. What these dinosaurs ate primarily is unknown, as researchers have found evidence for them being both carnivorous and herbivorous. This shouldn't be a surprise, since it's rare for animal stomachs to get preserved, and coprolite dung fossils don't have species tags on them either. Oh well. Next we come to the Paraves. This clade includes some extremely bird-like dinosaurs, including Shautengia, Eosinopteryx, Anchiornis, and Scansoriopteryx. Scansoriopteryx belongs to the family Scansoriopterygidae, one of the most unusual clades of small theropods. Epidaxipteryx had a short tail with four long ribbon-like feathers, but no pinaceous feathers on its arms unlike most other paraves. And weirder still, Yi had wings made of membrane for gliding, which is unique among all dinosaurs. So it seems that this particular clade lost the wing-like feathers of Manoraptoriformes, and then later reinvented the wing in a different way. Yi is therefore an excellent example of convergent evolution, showing that closely related lineages independently evolved in similar directions. A subset of Paraves is Eumanoraptora, which includes Troodontidae, Dromaeosauridae, and Aviale. Both Troodontidae and Dromaeosauridae are so bird-like that researchers are currently in heated debate over which is closer to Avialians, which includes birds, or whether they're sister to each other. Some of the early Eumanoraptorans could fly, or at least glide, such as Microraptor, which we talked about in the video Evolutionary Frauds. Microraptor in particular is interesting for several reasons. For starters, it had flight feathers on all four wings, seemingly confirming the Tetrapteryx prediction that was made by William Beebe in 1915, which says that the evolution of birds passed through a four-winged stage. However, Microraptor is not an avialin, it's a dromaeosaurid, making it more closely related to things like Velociraptor and Utahraptor. This led Gregory S. Paul and others to suggest that all dromaeosaurids descended from a common ancestor with birds that had some flying capability. Thus, dromaeosaurids became secondarily flightless. Other researchers disagree and state that Microraptor has evolved aerial locomotion independently to the ancestors of birds, just like Yi which would also suggest that four-winged gliders like Microraptor were an evolutionary dead end that left no descendants and thus are not part of the line leading to birds. Although this would not exclude the possibility that the ancestors of birds went through a tetrapteric stage independently from Microraptor. So that is the phylogeny of the non-avian theropods. They came from small, simple beginnings and diversified into various sizes and niches. In the next video, the last video of this series, we will take a look at the phylogeny of the remaining theropods, and consequently the last surviving dinosaurs, the Aves. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.